Hey guys, it's Mr. Wolfie, and I was just going to make a little special video today. Uh, I thought about it, and everybody makes those, you know, top ten, top five lists of these are my favorite things and all that stuff. And I thought I'd make one because uh, I really was feeling like doing some Sega-related things, and I thought I would make a video about my top ten must-have Sega games uh, for the Genesis specifically. Uh, for people that are, you know, new to collecting Sega games and uh, Sega Genesis stuff in general, and well, I, you know, and the list is is it's my opinion. It's not like these are factual things. By the way, I'm wearing a Godzilla T-shirt. So the rules of the list are uh, simple. It, it's only games that I own and have owned for quite some time that are, you know, my personal uh, games I've played a whole bunch, must have kind of games, and. I also, uh, to kind of handicap the list, I did not include Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles because that's pretty much the, in my opinion, the game for the Sega Genesis. Actually, the number one on my list is a game that I like more than this and I've played more than this. Well, I don't know if I've played more than this. That's a, that's a possible thing. I don't know. But anyway, to, to make the list a little more uh, unique, I'm going to just not have that. Now, a lot of the things on the list are probably going to be on other people's lists. So, we'll just get right into it. It's going to be 10. Uh, the rest of the video is going to be me talking with my, my headset, not the camera. So, uh, I'll see you there. Number 10, Cyborg Justice. Do you really feel like smashing something? Like being just the most brutal, violent, ripping arms off, making things explode kind of person you could possibly be right now, then you should play Cyborg Justice because it's freaking amazing. You get to make your own character out of a series of uh, different body parts from different robots, I guess you could say, and there's all kinds of different combinations and, you know, some are better than others, but hey, doesn't matter. Whatever you do, you can do the same kind of robot smashing epic explosions, ripping body parts off, everybody dies, it's action, and it's fantastic, and it's just, if you don't like it, then something's probably wrong with you, because this game is amazing. This is a definite must-have, a definite jewel on the crown of any Sega Genesis owner's collection. Cyborg Justice. It's just fun to say. Number 9. Eternal Champions. Oh man, what can I say about Eternal Champions that somebody else probably hasn't said already? Like, seriously, I'm asking. I don't know. A lot of people like this game. It's pretty famous, pretty popular. It's a fighting game that is not quite as uh, high tier on everyone's list as the Mortal Kombat's and the Street Fighters, but hey, what it is, is fantastic. It's got a little bit of an emotional backstory to it. Every character in here dies in some horrible way, in some climactic imbalance between good and evil. They could have made the world a better place, but they died as a result of their actions. So, the Eternal Champions is all about bringing them back from the dead and having them fight each other to the death to see who gets to go back before their death and fix their death so that their impact on the world around them is better. How awesome is that for a premise? Every character has different fighting styles and everything, and they're all based on real martial arts, and the action and combat is just awesome, and it's difficult. If you really want a challenge, try playing this on anything above normal. It's a great way to test your mettle as a gamer, trust me. Number 8. Echo the Tides of Time. Technically, this is the second game in the Echo the Dolphin series, and in my opinion, it's the best. The graphics are great, the controls are second to none. You will never find a video game in which you're swimming that has better controls than Echo the Dolphin. The main character is... He's a dolphin. He's kind of... I mean, he doesn't have a lot of personality, it's just a dolphin that you get to go eat and fight and echo with. But whatever, the gameplay itself is fantastic. It's a combination of puzzle solving and combat. The game itself is very fast paced and a little bit difficult, as all great games of that generation were. A lot of people are on the fence about whether or not they like this game, and I can understand that. There's definitely some reasons to uh, choose other games over this one, but in my personal opinion, Echo the Dolphin is a very good series and should be at least experienced before you judge it. If you own a Sega Genesis or are thinking about owning a Sega Genesis, this is definitely a game you should try out. Number 7. King of the Monsters 2. Well, everybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge Godzilla fan, and really just giant monsters in general. So this game is an obvious must-have for my collection. King of the Monsters 2 is a fighting game in which you get to play as, what else, giant monsters. Fantastic premise, I know. You get to go around smashing cities and smashing other monsters' faces. There's a version of this game on the Super Nintendo, but it has a story mode rather than the main fighting game mode, and 
in reality, I prefer this kind of format better for this particular game because you get to pick between a list of monsters rather than just the main three of Super Geon, Atomic Guy, and Cyber Wu. Really, the story mode doesn't add anything to the game that wasn't already epic. What are you really after when you play this game? Obviously, you're after smashing cities and smashing other monsters' faces, as I said before, so this game has everything you need. Just plug in a second controller and have your buddy choose whatever his favorite monster is, and you choose your favorite monster, and you just go at it. Because there is no tier system. Everything, everything works. Everything's good. Game the monsters. Number 6, X-Men. There have been a lot of comic book based video games over the years, and in my opinion, X-Men for the Sega Genesis is possibly the best. But in terms of X-Men characters, this game is the game to check out. If you like the X-Men, if you like Marvel in any way, if you like adventure games, fighting games, anything like that, this game has it all. It's, you get to pick between four of the most popular X-Men, Nightcrawler, Gambit, Wolverine, and Cyclops, and fight your way through various locales from X-Men Mythos. It's got a lot of action, and it's got some interesting gameplay mechanics, such as being able to summon other X-Men characters to help you fight in various ways. Nightcrawler is a little bit overpowered in that he can teleport through barriers that most characters have to find switches to open up. So in my opinion, he's really the best character in the game, but I guess everybody else has their own opinions, but I think a lot of people agree with that one. They all have their benefits and they all have their negatives, so you just whatever you want to do. There's no wrong way to play this game. Just go experience it. Add it to your collections. Fantastic game. Number 5. Ghouls and Ghosts. Not to be confused with the Super Nintendo version of it called Super Ghouls and Ghosts, which is literally a completely different game in the same format. This game is actually a very good port of the arcade version. The difficulty is second to none in this series. And the, I mean, it's just exacerbated by the fact that you have to beat the game twice to actually physically beat it the official way. That alone makes it worth at least experiencing to see if you can survive the frustration. With tons of cool power-ups, a gothic atmosphere, and really memorable bosses, this game has everything you could really look for in a platformer. If you're prone to rage-quitting games, you probably shouldn't check this out, but if you think you can handle it, if you're man enough for this sort of thing, check out Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis. Number 4. Vector Man. So Vector Man seems like on the surface it could just be a copy of Mega Man, and in a lot of ways it's very similar. You're just jump and shoot and jump and shoot man, show shoot and jumping and jumping and shooting. What it becomes is a very quirky experience with a charismatic protagonist. The bosses are very memorable, the music is fantastic, some of the best on the Sega Genesis and some of the best in the 16-bit platform in general. It's very difficult, and it takes a little bit of a learning curve to understand the mechanics in such a way that you won't just walk around dying over and over. It looks great and is really a testament to what the Sega Genesis was capable of at the time. There's a sequel to Vector Man adequately called Vector Man 2, but in my opinion Vector Man 1 is better. If you're going to choose just one game to represent the series, I would pick this one. Number 3, Rocket Knight Adventures. Now on the surface, Rocket Knight Adventures seems like it could just be a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog, but there's really not that many similarities. The protagonist is a possum that has a suit of armor, a sword, and a jetpack. I mean, how much more awesome can you get? The gameplay is fast-paced and exciting, and is moderately difficult. It's not exactly an easy, everybody-can-play-it sort of game, especially in the later levels, but it has enough replay value that it doesn't really matter if you're not doing that well. It's just, it's just fun to do. It's just fun to just shoot around and explode and things and murder and kill. Eat the pig. Now, there's other games in the series, and there's even a reboot that recently came out. It's called Rocket Knight. But in my opinion, you should check this one out more than any of the others, because this one really defined the entire series and in a lot of ways defined the genre of 16-bit platformers. Number 2. The Sega Genesis 6-Pack. Okay, so this is kind of cheating because it's actually six games in one, but hey, it actually shipped with my Sega Genesis and it's the game I've owned the longest, so I don't think it counts. What's cool about the 6-Pack is that it represents everything that the Sega Genesis was capable of at the time, and what was great about it. It's got six very different games that all have their own personality and replayability. It's got Revenge of Shinobi, which is an awesome platformer where you're a ninja fighting to save the world from an evil corporation. It's got Super Hang On, which is a great racing game with RPG elements, which at the time was kind of unheard of. It really set the bar for a lot of the 3D racers that came later that allowed you to customize your vehicles. Columns is a fantastic puzzle game that has a lot of similarities with Tetris or, you know, other games of the genre such as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. 
but it has its own personality and even a series of sequels. It's got the first Sonic the Hedgehog, which allows me to slip one of those into the list to represent the series. It's got Streets of Rage, which is a fantastic side-scrolling beat-em-up. One of the best of the entire genre itself, and probably one of my most played games of all time. And then my favorite game on the six-pack is the epicness that is Golden Axe. A sword and sorcery adventure where you get to play as a dwarf, a barbarian, or an Amazon, and I always pick the dwarf. They've had many imitators, but they stand as their own true testament to the archetypes that they represent. And my number one most recommended Sega Genesis game is Castlevania Bloodlines. Okay, so I hate to break the bad news to you, but Castlevania Bloodlines is actually hard to get a hold of. Now, I really didn't want to do that for this list, but I couldn't not name this game. You should have seen me play through this game on my channel, so you've seen it, you've experienced it with me. It's one of the best games that has ever come out on any system ever. Especially, in my opinion, it's probably the best game on the Sega Genesis besides Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And it's definitely my favorite Castlevania besides the original. The problem is it's hard to get a hold of, and if you're collecting Sega Genesis games, then you're not going to spend under $40 for this game on eBay. But if you're a collector and you have any kind of disposable income, I can't recommend this game enough. It's got huge replay value because it's got two characters to choose from, which makes it feel like it's two completely different games. The music is, in my opinion, the best soundtrack that you can get out of the Sega Genesis. Well guys, that was my list. So what's yours? In the comments, why don't you make a list of your own, or maybe even make a response video to mine. Remember, this is my opinion and this is only games that I own. And I just wanted to share with you some titles that I knew would not disappoint. Anyway guys, this has been Mr. Wolfie. I hope you enjoyed the list. And remember, never take the game or yourself too seriously. Peace out. Love you guys. This has been Mr. Wolfie. That'll work. That'll work.